there, friends. How you doing? So welcome. This is a little bit different approach. Obviously, you've got my mug here in the backdrop or in the forefront, depending how you're looking at this, of our Make Code programming. And so what we're going to be taking a look at is just uh, introducing some very simple uh, coding concepts that are important for, for coding and computer science, also for us to think about as we start to build out some projects here in Make Code and also Python. And so the first one that we want to take a look at is just the concept of a variable. I'm sure this is something that is reviewed for many of you, but the idea of a variable is we can assign a letter or a name um, to any sort of value. So think about math class when you've sat through and you know x equals five or you know solving those those algebraic equations very similar type of structure here so what we want to do is just do a simple um, activity exploring the idea of variables we're going to look at it here in make code and then we're going to look at it also in our Moo and our micro python editor so you can see the differences one of the things that you're going to find out right away anytime i i, I run workshops about transitioning from block to text coding at first the text coding always seems super overwhelming but what you have to realize is down the road when you get past beginner type codes beginner applications text coding is way more efficient much simpler to understand and block based coding can become very tedious and cumbersome so if you've ever used like scratch try to do some high level coding like you're putting block within blocks and, try, and it can get confusing really fast where text coding can be much easier to read and code and figure it out so just Take a deep breath, like LeVar Burton always says, and uh, you know, understand that there's going to be a little learning curve with this, but in the long run, we're going to be able to see the, the benefits of both block-based and text coding. So let's dive into this work here. And so what we're going to do is we don't need this forever block, so we're going to right-click this like we did before, and we're just going to delete that out like we've done, and we're going to use this start block here. I'm actually just going to move over here to the side of my head so you can see it a little bit better. Um, it's kind of a weird thing with me in the background. Let me know what your thoughts are about this. But what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable. And so our variables are, are in these menus. So you can see here that if I go to variables, I can go here to make a variable. And I can call it any name I want. So just using um, a simple counter activity, I'm just going to call it counter. And you see what happens here then is when I make that variable, I now have a variable block and I get some new blocks where I can set the value of the variable and I can change it. So we're going to drag this set counter block out. We're going to add that right there. Okay. And we're just doing just that. We're going to make sure that counter is zero. And then we're going to go through now and we're going to put in some, some inputs. So on our micro bit, we have lots of inputs. In this case, we've got the most easiest ones to understand are the buttons. We have an A button and a B button, an input that when we press, we can use that information um, to start to do some stuff here with the micro bit. So we're going to go to this input section of our menu, okay, and we're going to drag out this on button A press. What do we want to have happen? And in this case, we're just going to change the counter number by one. So we're going to go back down here to our variables and we're going to use this change counter. We already have it set to one here, but I can make this by five, by 10, by 15 whatever it might be. In this case, every time we press, we just want the number to go up by one. So we're going to go up here to this basic and we want to show the number. Okay. So we're just going to show this and we don't want it to show zero. We don't want this to be a static number that's always frozen in time. So you can see here in the simulator, nothing's happening. We want this to show the variable value of counter. So we're going to go back to our variable block here, and we're just going to drag this in. See, this fits in there just like scratch. You can see the kind of like a yellow highlight there, right? So I put that in there. So now here's what's going to happen in this code. One, when we go to start this code, it resets counter to zero. And then every time we press the A button, counter is going to go by one, and we're going to display that. And this will activate every time the button's pressed. It's not going to activate until then. So you can see here, a cool little tip about make code is that when I go and I hover over any of these buttons here or any of these icons, I can get a description. By that, I mean, I could right click this and I could go to help and it's gonna give me information about that block, which I think is really, really helpful um, as we start to, to learn more about what we can do. We get into some more advanced stuff here. And so 
Hopefully this will show up here in just a second. There it is. And you can see here that it gives you lots of information of what you can do, some examples, all that good stuff. And it also gives you what it looks like in JavaScript and in Python, which is really exciting. Okay, so we don't need that here, but we just want to see what this code looks like. So if I press A here in the simulator, I'm going to use this versus cutting over to the actual micro bit for the beginning ones. I press that, you can see that it shows me one. I press it again, there's two, three, four onwards. So this is really, really exciting. Now, if we want to take a look at what this looks like in code, we could go back to the Moo in our MicroPython editor and operate that way. However, there is something in this main code that is new and exciting. I mean, new for a lot of you maybe who didn't even realize it's there. But normally, what we've been able to do is we've always been able to go from blocks to JavaScript in this make code. It's all built in. And what it does is it'll show you what your code looks like in JavaScript. But check this out. There is now a drop-down menu. And we can go right here into Python. And this is exciting. This is something we didn't have before. And so you can see here that it's going to take your blocks and it's going to convert it into Python. So what we've got here is this explanation of stuff. And so it is on a button, button A pressed, okay? The counter is going to go up by plus one. That's what this Python is telling us to do. And then it's going to show basic show it's going to show that number it's going to show the variable of counter and you can just see here then the code here so initially it's got counter at zero all right and then every time we go through it's going to add one to that so you can see how it looks like in python right away um, if you're interested but what i want to do here i'm going to click this back to blocks because i think converting it is nice but I do believe there's a real value in coding this yourself, at least in these beginning stages, to kind of understand some of the commands. So let's head over to Moo and uh, take a look at this Python coding, writing it in, in, in Python. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to go through and I'm going to do a new code here. And now what we're going to do in the Python is we're going to write this code. Now, I know we could have just copied and pasted over from the make code, but I think it's important in these early stages that we do some of this just to understand how it works. So um, for this, because when we use the, the Python editor, we don't have a micro bit simulator on the screen. So I do have a micro bit plugged in. I'm going to plug it in here now off to the side. So just so I can double check my own work while we're working here. Um, and you can just follow along. But for this case, you're going to need your micro bit plugged in. So just as a reminder, when we go to use this editor here. One, we want to make sure that we're in the micro bit mode so we know that it can communicate um, this way with the things. We also know, and this is what you didn't see in the make code because the make code is already synced up with the micro bit, but we need to add this from micro bit, okay, import. And this is just going to bring in the libraries because we could act technically use this code for things beyond just, just micro bit. So this is just going to help with that communication there with our with our device. Okay. Then when we had that that block of code, remember we had a on start and then we were set the counter to zero. If you remember that red block that we had. So this is where sometimes text is much easier. We're going to create a variable and we're just going to call this counter. We can make this whatever. I could call it peanuts, I could call it coffee, whatever. And I'm going to just add counter equals zero. Now I'm putting this this pound, this hashtag sign next to it just so that we can have some leave some comments here. So I'm just going to tell you that we are creating a variable and assigning the value to zero. You don't need to type this in, this is just for you to kind of visually see. And we're going to come into this more in the next video, but we're going to be creating a, a loop. This is going to be a forever loop. So earlier when we had the on button A press, that button, and it was just waiting. That, that code of block, this is where simple code's nice. It's just waiting for that button to be pressed. What we're going to be doing here is writing a, a loop called while true. And this just means forever. This thing, this code is going to forever run with this code that we're, we're coming up with. And you can see that it indents. So what you're going to find out in Python is, is indents, spelling, 
capital letters, lowercase letters, all that stuff is vital for your code to be functional. And that's usually where 99% of the mistakes are, is spelling, missing a comma, or colon, um, things of that nature. So what we're going to do here, we're going to put in a if-then statement. And this is basically what those blocks did. You can see that it's starting to fill in. Okay, so I want to say if button A, okay, was pressed. What I want to have happen is I want counter, okay, to go up by one. So we want to add that in there. And then we want to display. We're going to have, we might have to have this as a scroll um, so that if our numbers get large, it can really fill up. Now here's what's important. The value that we have in counter is numerical. And display scroll only uses, can print out strings. So we have to convert our value of our variable into a string. So what we're going to see here, and if you're like, I have no idea what you're talking about, just it'll, it'll start to make sense over time. Let me go ahead and get this typed in here um, as we go to run. And so now what's going to happen here in this code is it's going to take our variable counter, whatever that value is, every time we press A, it's going to add a number to it, okay, and it's going to convert it to a string, a value that can then be displayed on the thing. So while true, that just means it's always true, it's, nothing's going to kick it out, um, and what this is going to do is if the button's pressed, change counter by one, and then display that. So I know it's, it's a you can't see this actually you know what? i'll get some video so you can see what happens because it's actually going to scroll the number across where before on our simulator is just showing it um here when i go to press the button you're going to see that it scrolls the number across so there's three there's four there's five you kind of get the idea here it's going to scroll that across so what it's doing is it's just converting that value to a string to be displayed so this right here is exactly what we created in MakeCode, just looks a little different. Now when we did the convert slide over, they have a different code. They used a, um, a different way of coding, which is not that one's better than the other. But I think this is a, a simple way, especially if you're following along in, in the book by Simon Monk, the micro bit from that scientist. You can kind of see how some of the stuff works. Um, I'm going to go through and finish filling in the comments. but. I want you to play around with this, and, and my challenge for you with this particular element here is I want you to go ahead and see if you can add something for the B button and for the AB. So can we write some block code and Python code that has something happen when we hit A, something that happens when we hit B, and something that happens when we hit a and B together and see if you can figure it out. And if you can, go ahead and send your code, share it over in the Discord so we can take a look at it, we can experiment with it, and we can see what it is that you came up with. So I look forward to seeing your ideas. This is just, again, the beginning of understanding variables in both block and in Python coding. Hope it's a little bit helpful. I look forward to your questions, thoughts, ideas, and coding examples. And until next time, my friends, stay awesome. Peace.